Hello everyone, this is a new subject reference to video framework created by ByteDance. And as we've talked about before in my main channel, I've made a short video demo to showcase this framework. As you can see, all these are based on images and those subjects as references. Or we can say right now in WAN 2.1, there's a VACE, which has a similar concept using references to create videos. The same concept applies to the Phantom Framework by ByteDance. Now in here, Phantom has even more consistency for the subject styles referenced in the videos as I see it, and their examples are really amazing. As you can see, there are a lot of examples on this page. I won't go through reading the website or those text prompts like other videos you've seen online. Basically, we're going to check out how this works on our local machine. First of all, we have the ByteDance Phantom Hugging Face official page repositories. Here you can see the files. It's basically a 5.6 GB file size for these models. The only thing that works well is using the .pth extensions, but then there are some safe tensor repackaged extensions that are more friendly for comfy UI and running locally. Back to the model card. As you scroll down to the information here, you can see that on April 20th, Phantom released their framework. Now, this is getting the base models using WAN 2.1 models, which are releasing checkpoints using WAN 2.1's 1.3 billion size parameters based on the base models. They've added this subjects to videos, or what we call the reference to videos framework. In this modified model from ByteDance's release, they're going to release the 14 billion size parameter models. Hopefully that's going to happen really soon. The training code isn't released yet, but I'm looking forward to seeing how we can train it, fine tune it with our own data and enhance the model as well. Also, this is mainly about having multiple images as subjects. As we've talked about in VAs before, we've been able to reference from an image and use that image as a reference for each element in the generated videos. The same concept applies to the ByteDance Phantom here. Another way they're doing it is that they don't have their base model. Instead, they're using WAN 2.1 as the base model and creating the framework around it or on top of it and making consistent character or consistent style video generation like the examples you see here. I also tested it locally with something funny that I tried, combining two characters that aren't in the same style. One is a tennis player and one is a male guy, and we combined them together, showing love. This is the larger resolution I generated. Even better, the way it performs is able to replicate or reference the styles of the image and put that into the generated video. This is another reference I made with two characters. The male character is referencing my YouTube icon image. Then, we put that together and tested it out. Basically, it can replicate Hawaiian shirt here and the female character, as we'll play around with later. This is another showcase of how we have two characters. Again, I put all these scenes where young couples fall in love, walking on the beach or sitting in the park. We try different backgrounds and put two subjects with different styles, different images together. That really makes it happen. Even as you can see, in different angles, back view, front view, and wide shots like this, we're able to keep the consistent styles. I also tried it with anime styles. As you can see right here, we can use the reference image. Although it's from non-anime styles, we can use a text prompt to generate it into anime style videos. Also, the elf that we're falling in love with. I put that into a specific background as I've used this foreign background previously and tried it as the environment for the subject. We can also input more than two subjects here. Now, Another one is the two Mortal Kombat style female ninjas and the futuristic fighter. As we've played around with before in Clean AI, using these two characters, it looks pretty nice. I've also switched even more aggressively into realism and tried it with, you know, like a wrestling cage. I put them into combat scenes like that. Although it's a very short three second demo here, you can get the style of how that looks. If you generate longer videos or combine multiple short scenes together, this one is using 720p resolution. I tried it with two resolution sizes here, 480p and 768p, and both work with this model. Now how do we run this model in Comfy UI and locally? The first thing you have to do, of course, is have the WAN videos wrapper, as most of you I believe have played around with before if you followed my channel along with previous videos. 
Recently, we talked about a lot of comfy UI WAN videos, and this is the WAN videos wrapper. The latest update it got is Phantom integrated here because Phantom is now based on WAN 2.1, so it's really easy to run. There are two models converted into safe tensor files. One is the Phantom WAN 1.3 BFP32. I'm going to use the FP32 this time because this isn't a large size model. It's just under 6 GB of file storage, and it's really easy to handle for my computer. For the NVIDIA 4090, no problem at all. There's another one that's lighter weight, in FP16, which costs about 3 GB of file storage. But then, the generation times depend on your GPU as well. Some testing I've done shows that when using one subject as a reference, I'm able to generate in about one minute, consuming about a maximum of four gigabytes of VRAM. Then, I tried two subjects, which is the young couple. All these videos I showed in the demo, I used even higher sampling steps, 4D sampling steps, and two subjects as references. And it consumed about two minutes and 33 seconds and eight gigabytes of VRAM to generate something like what you saw here with the young couple, two subjects in the video. And, as you can see in many other examples I just showed, all these two examples are using 480p dimensions. When I increased the dimensions even higher, I tried 720pi, or what I set here, 1280 width and 768 height. It took about 8 minutes to generate, costing double the VRAM when you set up high resolutions to generate that video. So it really depends on the resolution size you set for your videos and the number of subjects you reference. As you reference more subjects, you'll consume more VRAM, like the examples I showed here. So that's how to basically use WAN 2.1 as the base model, the Phantom, and how this is going to run. Let's check out the workflow here. Based on the ideas of using WAN 2.1 and the VA's reference to videos I've tried before and put that into this workflow. First of all, we have the Phantom WAN 1.3 billion parameter model. I'm using FP32, so I set the base precision in FP32. Of course, this is no question at all. Then, the attention mode I've set to stage attention. While you can try SDPA, which I've explained many times before in previous videos, if you don't have stage attention, you use this one. Go to the VAE and the text encoder. It's using the same text encoder and VAE as what we have in WAN videos. We can use the KJ compiled Safe Tensor Files Edition or the Comfy Release Safe Tensor Files Edition as well. Also, for the text encoder, we're using the same as WAN 2.1, then go to here. The next section I've set up is the video settings. As I've shown, the preferred resolutions are here. If you're running low on VRAM or want to generate lower resolutions, of course, you go for 480p using these settings, then go to the video length. As usual, it's using 81 frames. Now, here's where we go to the subjects. As you can see, I've separated different groups, different subject groups actually. This makes it easier to manage since the maximum of four latent inputs for phantom subjects allows us to input here. So, therefore, we have four groups basically here. So, as you can see, one subject, two subjects, three, and so on. For subject three and four, I've just bypassed them. We don't always have to include all four subjects in the input when generating videos. Most likely we'll play around with two subjects, though I've found that three subjects work well too. If you want to customize your video's background, you'll include your background image as a reference as well, and that's doable in the phantom input here. So, in the WAN video's phantom embed, this is what we have to change instead of using VAs. This one is simpler. As you can see, we only need to input the latent data of the four subjects included. Based on that, we're going to connect those latent outputs from our previous subject groups here. So let's say we have subject 2, this is another character, and that will show the latent output using the WAN videos encode. Once we have the image input and the VAE of WAN, we'll have the samples later. This pink dot here connects with our WAN videos phantom embed. So here, as you can see, we have the image embed. This is going to connect like how we have WAN 2.1 V8, the same connection style. We go to the image embed here, the text prompt, Basically, you just describe whichever subjects you're referencing and then put those into the image for the generated video. This is no different from the reference to videos in VAs. But then, 
you'll see the performance is totally different. I see ByteDance being more precise when referencing subjects, more able to show the uniqueness of each subject I've input and bring those characters or styles more emphasized in my videos. On the other hand, when I tested VAs, as you can check out the previous videos on the reference to videos topic, it's kind of less strong for referencing subject styles. So let's check out this generation here using this workflow and see how it looks. Here, we've got the generated result. We have two characters as subject references here, young couples walking on the beach using the same prompt as I had in my previous examples. As you can see, we're able to replicate those styles from what we have in these two images. One thing I forgot to update in this workflow is that things in AI are moving too fast. A recent update brought resize image version 2 in the KJ node. Once you update the KJ node custom notes pack, you have this version 2 for resize image, where you have the pad color and keep proportions as padded. It's able to do the same structure of the image like this rather than having the previous custom nodes style using two nodes connections here. So, it's more efficient having version 2 using one node to connect rather than two nodes. Therefore, we don't need list 2 if you prefer using version 2 like this one. I'm also putting the previous subject reference 2 here using the previous styles. As you can see, using two custom nodes of version 1, the old way of connecting and resizing the image, and then using image path to get the white background for the image is the same. You know, the output result like this does the same features. But when you're using image version 2, you're using one node and able to do two things in one more efficient way for creating and simplifying the connections for the workflow as a whole. The diagram looks more neat and simple now. Back to the video results. As we can see, the details are able to create backgrounds. However, the outfit doesn't always follow through. For example, the lady's dress here, because we don't have the full image of how it looks, the AI just predicts how it's going to look based on the coloration in the image of the subject reference. Then, it does its own predictions. For hairstyles, we have those as well. The most obvious one following the subjects as a reference is the second subject. We have the male character, the Hawaiian shirt. Here, we have the same colorations for the video generated. I've generated three more examples here. First, I tried with a simple prompt without mentioning the styles of the character's outfit in the text prompts. Basically, it lets the AI predict what's going to be in the text prompt regarding the styles of the outfit throughout the generations. As you can see, there are some differences when we have the reference image back to this section. We don't have the male character's outfit, and we just have the upper part of the female character's outfit. But it gets the wrong dress. It should be a one-piece long dress. So with fewer text prompts, it won't be too relevant to what we have in our subject's reference image. The second example is this close-up shot of the video where I tried another seed number. Here, we have another wrong style of outfit for the male character. Although the female character's arm looks closer to what we have in the subject as a reference, in this second example, I still haven't used the text prompts to mention what kind of outfit style is relevant to what I have in the reference image. So therefore, that Hawaiian shirt from the male character doesn't appear in the generated video. Most of the time, this kind of close-up shot of a character's face or portrait style character face image is only referring to the character's face and hairstyle as the most relevant aspects. If you haven't mentioned much about the outfit or styles in the text prompts, the animations in the whole video scene still look pretty good, even though it's not the same outfit for the male character. The last one I tried is this one, where I was more descriptive of the styles. In the text prompts, I mentioned the woman's outfit, how the body shape looks, and I also put black high heels for the shoes. For the male character, I mentioned he's wearing a Hawaiian shirt with white pants and brown shoes. So, therefore, it gives a far shot like this to show the shoes in the video scenes as well. As you can see, when I mention the shirt and the one-piece long dress of the female character, it does show what I have from the reference image, which is more relevant to what I have in the image in the video. Even the pattern of the Hawaiian shirt, we have almost the same pattern as what I have in the reference image. So, that's basically how far I've tested using the Phantom, and this looks like better performance than what we have in the reference to videos in Wan V8. Actually, I like this one more for, you know, just having a few characters, image background scenes, 
and then using a text-to-video style of generating scene-by-scene, scene, making your stories more suitable for narrative-style video content and storytelling content as well. So far, I've tried out with different inputs, different references, and using different varieties of styles of input. Where you see the character pretty consistently, and the previous styles as well. Even when I use different text prompts for different environments, the character body shape is still able to replicate, and those styles, especially the hair, character face, and outfit, stay consistent. So far, I pretty much like this reference to videos, or, as they call it, subjects to videos, in Phantom's framework. I'm really looking forward to the 14 billion parameter model and seeing how that brings even more improvement for pixels, more details, and higher resolutions that it can support. This is gonna be fun for this year to have multiple subjects referenced in videos. This kind of thing started previously in Clean AI, they had elements and character references in Minimax, and now we see a lot more similar frameworks in open source AI video models. So this is a really fun thing to play with, and it's an exciting time in AI as well. So that's it for this video, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day, see ya.